Hello friends. It is wonderful to have you with me again today. Today I've got another little presentation for you that I've put together. And it's a topic which I'm very, very passionate about. <laughs> I've been interested in animals my whole life and I even went to uh, college for a very 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 short time to study animals because I wanted to be an RSPCA inspector and help to save animals in need but that didn't quite work out Nevertheless, I still love nature, wildlife, and animals of all kinds. So today I thought I would bring to your attention the animals of Great Britain, where I'm from. And these are animals that are native to this part of the world and also some which were introduced a long, long, long time ago which have become sort of semi-native and we're going to be just looking at the land animals the animals that are on land <laughs> be doing um, birds and marine creatures in another video, but for today we're just going to be looking at land animals. So let's begin. We start off with the adder. Now I do apologize if anyone phobia of snakes. I should have put a warning on this video. <laughs> My dad is Indiana Jones, I swear. He's got an awful, awful fear of snakes. He doesn't like them whatsoever. Um, so I apologise if anyone out there has got that phobia. So I'll be reading this little description for you and I've also included some fun facts as well so you can uh, just see something interesting about the animals I'm talking about. And again, if you want to download this or follow along with the video, then I'll put a link in the description where you can download that. So, the adder is Britain's only venomous snake found throughout mainland Britain, including some of the offshore islands, in a variety of open and man-made habitats. Once bitten, adder venom can kill prey in under three minutes before being swallowed whole. Despite their deadly bite, Adders will always attempt to flee danger rather than confront it, and thankfully its bite is rarely fatal for humans. There have been 14 recorded human deaths from adder bites since 1876, and the last one being in 1975, and it's reported that there are only 50 to a hundred human bites recorded a year on average. So there's not a lot really. And let's zoom in close to this guy here. He looks really mean. <laughs> but brilliantly beautiful at the same time. He's got these black ridges going up his back. striped on the side of his head. You can also hear some little creatures on my, uh, my roof at the studio here. It's quite fitting that he 
comes from the result of a historical pronunciation error. The Old English nada became hada. And do you remember in my World War I um, sayings video, we English are notorious for mispronouncing basically everything and shortening it down to something a little more friendly to our, to our uh, native tongue. But I don't see why nada became adder. What's so difficult about the N? I just dropped the N and went with the adder. Okay, so that's the adder. We do have a little uh, additional information on the adder. So let's have a look at that. So it's native to the uh, to the UK. Its length can get up to 60 centimeters, and the males are actually smaller than the females. And the babies are about 14 centimeters when they're born. The males have a black zigzag pattern on white, well, a white bluish background. And the females are a bit browner. And that same pattern is on a reddish background. They have that characteristic V shape on the head, Oops, as you can see here. And their underside is grey or black with pale spots. And where do they live? So they live on a wide range of lowland and upland, both dry and wet, as long as there are suitable basking areas such as sand, rocks or quarries, or even railway embankments. So you'll find these mostly at like the beach or anywhere that's sort of open and gets quite sunny and hot because they can't regulate their temperature as they're reptiles, so they need somewhere nice and warm. They hibernate in the winter, normally underground on south-facing banks, free from flooding and frost. So the young, the eggs hatch within the female's body, and they give birth to six to twenty live young, which are born in August. So they don't necessarily lay eggs, the eggs are contained within the snake's body, which is amazing, isn't it? So what do they eat? They eat frogs, toads, lizards, slow worms, small mammals, and also bird eggs. So they have a varied and um, varied diet. So what about their population? How many of these critters are slithering around? So their pre-breeding season, numbers that is, is expected or estimated to be 130,000. So let's have a look a little again at these guys. I think they're just actually really, really This is a really striking image, look at his beautiful eye. Reminds me of the eye of Sauron, Lord of the Rings. So, that's the Adder. Now we move on to one of my favourite little critters, and that's the Badger. Well, the Badger is a horribly misunderstood creature, and come from, well, I don't come from, but um, my uh, partner's family were very much into uh, the country sports, so um, I kind of lived around that for a little while, and um, I was 
passionately against it. Um, and they would go and call the badgers because they would be classed as vermin, as most of these animals on here are classed as, unfortunately. But anyway, let's, let's have a look at the badger and see why he's so misunderstood. So, the badger is the largest member of the must, mustelid family. I can never say that word right. Mustelid. And Britain's largest land carnivore. Badgers are highly social creatures and love spending time among their family in their network of extensive underground tunnels called sets. S-E-T-T-S. Badgers are very conscientious homeowners and will make sure that their bedding is replenished with fresh grass and leaves each day. That's so cute. There is also a purpose-built latrine pit that they use to go to the bathroom in order to keep the rest of their home clean and free from disease. Some badger homes are over a hundred years old and are passed down to future generations, many having up to 40 entrances and many meters of tunnels. They are nocturnal and emerge from their sets at dusk and will forage all throughout the night for food. Luckily for them, their sense of smell is astonishing, up to 800 times better than a human's, so finding food in the dark is no problem. In the winter though, they are much less active, but they do not hibernate like other animals. A lot of stigma surrounds badgers, like I mentioned to you just a moment ago, as they were thought to be responsible for bovine tuberculos tuberculosis, a very serious disease that kills thousands of livestock each year. However, there is no evidence to suggest that this is true, but their population was drastically reduced due to illegal baiting and destruction of their sets. But in 1992, the Protection of Badgers Act made badger baiting and digging illegal. And in addition, it made an, it an offence to damage, destroy or obstruct their sets. This protection has enabled the UK badger population to increase once again. I mean, how could you... How could you do anything <laughs> to this guy? Look at him, he's just so adorable. Look at his tiny little eyes. Oh, don't you just want to kiss this mouth? <laughs> he actually reminds me of my dog. <laughs> this kind of fluffy arms here. Oh, he just looks so cute. So that's the badger. And the fun fact, this is a good one. Badgers comfort the young during thunderstorms. Isn't that just adorable? It makes them even more cuter. So what else can we learn about the badger? So it is native to Great Britain. So its size, its head body, is about 75 centimetres. And its tail is about 15 centimeters. It weighs roughly 8 to 9 kilos in the spring and 11 to 12 kilos in the autumn. So what do they look like? They have a thick set round backed body which is very very powerful. The iconic black and white striped face and coarse grey body fur, which is black on their legs. Where do they live then? They tend to favour woodland, which is close to arable farmland. They prefer well-drained soil 
and they often dig their sets under matted tree roots to provide stability to the soil. That's very clever. The nest. The nest chambers in the tunnels are lined with dry grass, bracken, and straw. And they actually take their bedding to the entrance of their set in order for it to air dry in the sun and make it nice and fresh for the night um, when they're sleeping. I thought that was really, really cool. What about their young? So they have one litter a year, roughly two to five cubs per litter, and they're born January to March. And the mating season takes place over the summer. So what do they eat then? They eat mostly earthworms, which make up 50% of their diet. They also eat insects, bulbs, small mammals, blackberries, grain, carrion, and windfall fruit. What about their population then? Though it's estimated that there are about 300,000 adults living in about 50,000 groups. However, 50,000 of them are killed each year on the roads, and 10,000 are still killed each year by illegal baiting. I've seen so many, so many badgers on the road, so much so, I think I've seen more dead badgers than I have live badgers. I think I've only ever seen one live badger in my whole life, and it was such a sight to behold. They are, they are huge, <laughs> bigger than what you expect. And look at this beautiful markings here. And here's the face. Kind of reminds me of a panda, in a weird sort of way. <laughs> Alright, so that is the badger. So now we move on to another misunderstood creature. And that is the black rat. Now you'll be surprised to know, because I was surprised to know, that there are two different types of rat. There's the black rat, and there's the brown rat. And actually the black rat is a lot less common than what you think, which we'll find out about in a minute. So... So the black rat is often mistaken for a brown rat, which is the larger of the two species. The brown rat often weighs over half a kilo and measures about 23 centimeters without the tail. And the black rat weighs half as much and is much shorter. The black rat has a pointed muzzle, large, almost hairless ears, and a more slender body, and a long, thin tail that is longer than its body. The black rat, also known as the ship rat, has a notorious history. I'm sure we all know why. Originally from India, it arrived in England with the Romans 2,000 years ago, in ships and crates of cargo. Fleas on black rats brought the plague to Europe and the Middle Ages, and when they came with the last crusaders returning from the Holy Land in 1348, killing over half the population at that time. Black rats live in packs of 20 to 60, and mainly eat plant matter such as seeds and fruits. They are primarily nocturnal and very agile, climbing ropes and brickwork and gnawing their way into wooden buildings. They are also very good swimmers. Black rats are one of the rarest animals in Britain now, and their numbers are diminishing over the last 50 years because docklands or dockyards which served as their last habitat, have been modernised and made more clean, I guess. So here is a 
cute little friend here the black rat and I used to actually have pet rats not a black rat mind you but domesticated rats and they were amazing creatures so smart so intelligent really cute really friendly and just excellent companions but again they are really 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 misunderstood but he's a cute one right so fun fact their tails keep them cool they control their body temperature by expanding and contracting the blood vessels in their tails and that's what keeps them cool i mean look at that that's just amazing isn't it this appendage here that's responsible for the heating and the cooling, amongst other things. So what else can we learn about the black rat? Oh, this picture is amazing. We'll look at that in a second. So they are not a native species. They were introduced back in the 12th century. Their size, um, like we said, they're smaller than the brown rat grow up to 12 to 14 centimeters in length but their tail is significantly longer at 14 to 26 centimeters they are slightly built it's a little bit sort of thinner with a long pointed face and large almost hairless ears the coat color ranges from gray brown to dark black which, of course, they'll get confused with a black rat. But it's the ears. The ears. They give them away. Their feet are whitish or pink. So where do they live, then? So, uh, at present, they're largely confined to main ports and coastal towns, where they forage inside warehouses and disused buildings making it easy to control their numbers because obviously they uh, breed very very quickly which we'll look at right now so they breed between April and November and females can produce up to five litters a year containing five to eight pups as the young are called and the young are sexually mature at five weeks old. So if the population isn't controlled, then they will breed and breed and breed and breed and breed. What about the nest then? They build it above the ground, in cavity walls, in between rafters, or even in hollow trees. The more I read this, the more I think we have a we have a uh, black rat in uh, my studio because uh, there's something that's nibbled the uh, soundproofing on the on the ceiling and uh, on the walls and I can hear something scuttling now and then and uh, it all makes it all ticks the boxes of the black rat because I live right, um, I live I rent a studio right out in the middle of nowhere <laughs> on a farm so uh, it kind of makes sense that we've got a a black rat <laughs> Diet. Let's have a look at what they eat. They're actually mainly vegetarian and they eat seeds, fruit and grain. Food is not stored but taken to a safe place to be consumed. So you'll be surprised to know that their population is only 1,300. That's it. You'd kind of think that there would be like yeah, 100,000 or more. But no, these little guys, they are not doing too good, bless them. But the brown rat, on the other hand, is, that's the ones that you see in uh, cities and, um, you know, places that are quite dirty. <laughs> this is the black rat. So, now we move on to... More elegant creatures. 
And we're going to have a look at the fallow deer. Now, in the UK, we have so many different species of deer. I haven't included all of them, um, but I've just included like the most uh, common ones, the ones that you may recognize more than others. And you probably recognize this badly thing here. So, what can we learn about the fallow deer? Fallow deer were first thought to be brought to England by the Romans, but the main introduction was by the Normans in the 11th century for ornamental and hunting purposes. It is a docile, non-territorial herding deer that thrives in parklands, making it ideal for semi-domestication. Feral deer so escapees from parks, are now common in southern England, increasing in number and slowly in distribution. They are now found throughout much of England and parts of Wales, some in Scotland and Northern Ireland. Herds may number a hundred if conditions are right, and there are now more deer in South East today than there were 500 years ago in the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. Fallow deer have palmate, so palm-like, antlers, a wider and flatter spread with less distinct tines than the red deer, which we'll look at in a minute. So let's have a look at these guys here. He's a very proud boy, isn't he? Look at his amazing antlers here. Aren't they just so impressive? And you can see how it looks like a palm here with these fingers. Amazing. So what about the fun fact? So fallow deer will spend most of the year in single sex herds only coming together in the autumn for the annual rut. So the rut is the mating season. And when I was in Scotland not long ago, it was the start of the rut. And we literally had these big, huge deer running past our little caravan that we rented. And it was thrilling and scary all at the same time. And they make this amazing sound really amazing. So it's just something wonderful to see. So what else can we learn about the fallow deer? Just correct me if I'm wrong, but is Bambi a fallow deer? This little guy certainly looks very Bambi-ish. So they're not a native species. Like we learned, they were introduced into the country in the 11th century. So what about their size? Their body size is the same as a female sheep, but they're a lot taller and they have long, thin legs. Males, called bucks, have flattened palmate antlers like antlers, but the females, the does, do not. They have a bright chestnut coat with spots in the summer, and they are drab grey or brown in the winter. I like that description, drab grey. <laughs> it's not light grey, it's not dark grey, it's drab grey. So they live um, semi-domesticated in many parks and forests throughout the UK. I think there is actually a deer park um, about an hour away from me. I haven't actually been, but I'd really like to go. So the fawns, the babies, are born in May or June after eight months gestation. And they weigh about 4.5 kilos, so about the size of an adult cat. And they are dappled 
to match their background and lie hidden in the undergrowth for the first few weeks of their life while their mother goes off to graze. Their mother returns every few hours to suckle the fawn, feed it. So they have a diet that's purely vegetarian, grass, young shoots, leaves, bark, heather, sweet chestnuts, acorns and cereals. Their population pre-breeding is estimated to be about 100,000. So, that is the fallow deer. And now we move on to one of my favourite animals. And that is the red fox. Again, another creature that is horrendously uh, misunderstood, horrendously prejudiced against. It's, it's really sad, these poor foxes, what they to go through and what they go through still now. But I just love seeing a fox. I see them sometimes when I come into work, come into the studio, in the mornings when they're going back to their dens, or sometimes when they're still out hunting. And they are just magnificent creatures, so, so versatile and just amazing. So, and they kind of remind me of me because of this first sentence. The fox is found in almost every habitat where flu food is plentiful <laughs> due to its remarkable ability to adapt to its surroundings. It is willing to eat almost anything and because of this has become particularly successful at surviving alongside man in farmland and urban areas, both of them. Despite their feral nature, Many people actually keep pet foxes or semi-domesticated wild ones by feeding them in their gardens. Where my grandparents live, um, one of the ladies down the road, the old, lovely, lovely old lady, used to feed the fox that used to come into our garden. And we used to see it just sitting there waiting to be fed. And some of the residents got really, really upset about it. But my grandparents uh, were really for it and um, they encouraged her to keep feeding it. So that was really nice. A female fox is called a vixen. And a male fox is called a dog fox or a tod. And baby foxes are called pups, kits or cubs. A group of foxes is called a skulk or a leash. The life expectancy of the fox is very, very short. 12 to 18 months in urban areas because 58% are killed on roads and rarely they get beyond three years in rural areas. In addition, foxes are frequently hunted and destroyed by farmers or those considering it a sport to kill them. However, in 20, 2004, a law was enacted in England and Wales to ban fox hunting, an activity in which hunters would ride on horses following a number of dogs who would pursue the exhausted fox before ripping the animal apart. However, hunters can still hunt and kill foxes by other means, legally, for example, lamping, which is a form of pest control involving the shooting of foxes at night with the aid of powerful lights. Remember I told you about my partner's family? They used to do that, and me and my partner spent so many years, so many years, saying how wrong it was and how they should stop doing it. Thankfully, after maybe 10 years, they stopped and they realised how cruel it was. So, we won, hooray. <laughs> Alright, let's take a look at this handsome chap here. Look at this magnificent creature. He's 
definitely got his eye on something here. He's ready to pounce. He has this such a smooth body. You can't see the tail here, but it's really big and bushy. So beautiful. So, fun fact. Foxes belong to the dog family, but they're more like cats than dogs. They are able to climb trees and are only and the only type of dog capable of retracting their claws like cats. So, the fox, I'm going to say, is a cat dog. So what else can we learn about the red fox? Oh, it's so beautiful. So, they are a native species. The head body is 62 to 72 centimeters and the tail is 39 to 41 centimeters. Females are slightly smaller than males. The males weigh 6.7 kilos and the females weigh 5.4 kilos. Their coat varies in color. Normally it's this typical reddish color but can also be orange or yellow with a dark stripe down the back. Their underside is white, grey or like a slate colour, but their legs or limbs are commonly black. The tip of the tail, known as the brush, is usually white. They live almost everywhere, from sea cliffs, sand dunes, salt marshes, peat bogs, by mountains, woodland, and particularly they are abundant in urban areas where there's a lot of food, a lot of uh, rubbish laying around just to be picked through. So the babies, they have one litter a year, normally in March, and four to five cubs are born underground in an earth. This is either dug by the fox in the hillocks or banks. And they may occupy a, a disused badger set or a large rabbit burrow. So they're very uh, ingenious creatures uh, looking for things already existing. Work smarter, not harder, right? So their diet, uh, they pretty much eat everything like we know. They eat feed voles, field voles, birds, rabbits, insects, earthworms, grasshoppers, beetles, blackberries, plums, carrion, and uh, anything else that they can find in bins. <laughs> and all the surplus food that they find that they can't eat right away is buried. So their population is estimated to be 258,000 pre-breeding. But like we said, they don't live very long, so, which is a bit sad, really. And look at this handsome chap. He's got beautiful eyes. They're very, very cat-like. Big, huge ears. Like that. So that's the red fox. Alright guys, so I'm going to leave it there for now because we have done, we've done the adder, we've done the badger, black rat, fallow deer, and fox. And we have got all of these beautiful creatures to look at. So we're going to split this video up to a couple of videos so otherwise this video would be hours long <laughs> so in the next video we are going to be continuing on with the grey squirrel the grey squirrel so thank you so much for watching guys I hope you have enjoyed it found it relaxing and fun and I will see you in part two where we continue on with the grey squirrel. Have a wonderful rest of your day.
and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.